Welcome to this narrated PowerPoint about Developmental Language Disorder, or DLD, from the Speech and Language Therapy Training Team. This training will cover the following. What is DLD? Facts about DLD. Identifying children with DLD in your school. Strategies to support children with DLD and how to spread the word about it. Developmental language disorder used to be known as specific language impairment or SLI for short. Developmental language disorder is a persistent type of speech language and communication need that cannot be explained by an obvious cause. DLD has been given different names in the past, which has sometimes made it confusing for professionals to talk about the condition and for children with DLD to get help. Experts have agreed that the term language disorder should be used to describe severe language difficulties that are likely to persist. In other words, it is likely that they will continue to have difficulties in the affected areas of language. Many children have a language disorder along with another condition or disability like Down syndrome or autism. As you would expect from the term developmental language disorder, DLD is a type of language disorder. Children who have English as an additional language can also have DLD and they will have difficulties in using both or all of their languages. It can be more difficult to unpick the specific language difficulties facing children with EAL, so a good place to start is by talking with the child's parents to find out if they also have difficulties in talking and understanding in their home language. This information has been taken from ICANN's DLD Summary Guide. If you'd like to look at this in more detail, please click on the link at the bottom of the slide. In order for a child to receive a diagnosis of developmental language disorder, their difficulties must be affecting their learning or affecting their ability to communicate with other children or adults. The speech therapist must also feel that their difficulties are likely to be ongoing, which is quite likely if they are five years old or older. And they must not have another condition or disability. If the child does have a biomedical condition or disability too, instead of DLD, it is likely that they would be diagnosed with language disorder. We will explain this more in the following slide. This Venn diagram illustrates the relationship between different diagnostic terms. DLD is nested within the broader speech, language and communication needs category. The largest yellow circle is this category of speech, language and communication needs, also named SLCN. This umbrella term refers to children with DLD and language disorder, but also includes all other children who have difficulties with speech, language or communication for any reason. Within this circle, we can see an orange oval referring to language disorder. As we said before, Language disorder is a term for language difficulties that are likely to persist. Developmental language disorder is a subcategory of this, seen here in the peach circle, to describe children and young people with persisting language difficulties in the absence of a biomedical condition or disability. The diagram also shows the different areas a young person or child with DLD may have difficulty with, which includes syntax, semantics, word finding, and pragmatics. We will explore this more on the next slide. Please take a moment to look at this bubble diagram from the Raddled website, which stands for Raising Awareness of Developmental Language Disorder. Here are some of the areas of language and communication that may be affected by DLD. For example, if we look at the red section of words, children with DLD may use non-specific words like thing, it, that. 
they may also have difficulty understanding or learning new words or have trouble finding the right word they want to use. A child may not have difficulties in all of these areas, but it's important to be aware that DLD can look different in different children and young people. We're going to talk about this later on when we discuss how to identify children with DLD. DLD is not the same in every person and not every person with DLD will have all of the features listed. This bubble resource can be downloaded at the link listed on the slide below. The new terminology of developmental language disorder was launched in 2017 and Raddle's first DLD Awareness Day quickly followed. Each year it is becoming bigger and better thanks to the support of people from all around the world. You can find out more about previous DLD Awareness Days and how to plan for the next one at the link on the slide. The DLD123 campaign by Raddled highlighted key facts about DLD. It identified that DLD is hidden but common and stated that DLD affects approximately 7.6% of all children in primary school, which equates to roughly two children in every average class of 30 in the UK. DLD is five times more prevalent than autism. DLD has no known cause, although it may run in families, and it affects a child's ability to learn at school because learning is mainly through language. DLD affects reading or writing and is often linked with dyslexia. DLD can be socially isolating, as joining in with conversations and activities with peers can be harder. DLD increases the risk of lower academic achievement, and it can be associated with behavioural and or mental health problems, unemployment and economic disadvantage. DLD can last a lifetime, but help is available. Children with DLD may have difficulties with several different skills, including sharing their thoughts and feelings, learning, remembering and using new words, understanding and remembering instructions in the classroom, following and joining in with conversations. The list goes on. You may wish to refer back to the bubble diagram from the Raddled website for more signs you can look out for. Although these language difficulties are common in children with DLD, it's very important to remember that no two children have the same language skills, communication or learning abilities. Speech and language therapists are the professional group who are responsible for making the DLD diagnosis. Speech and language therapists use information from lots of sources, including assessment data, classroom observations, parental reported information and school reported information. The following strategies are some of the ways in which you can support children who have DLD. Get their attention before speaking, for example, saying their name and getting down to their level when you're talking so they can see your face. Use simple language and repeat if necessary. Keep instructions short. Say exactly what you want them to do in the order you want them to do it and give one instruction at a time. Break down larger amounts of information into smaller, more manageable pieces, a strategy known as chunking. Use visual support, for example, gestures, facial expression, pictures and symbols to help them understand what you say. Repeat back what they say using correct grammar. Use visually distinct sections when completing work or activities, for example, organising the page so that separate instructions, steps, themes or activities are clearly set apart from each other, as this can help the child with DLD manage the task in smaller steps. Ask them to repeat what you have said. If needed, say it again and show them. Create chances for children with and without DLD to talk to one another. 
explicitly teach conversational tools if this is an area they find difficult. Explicitly teach language structures, for example, narrative structures or sentence structures. Give children extra time to express themselves. Be kind but honest when you don't understand. If they're finding it difficult, give them a choice between two options. Pre-teach new vocabulary, explaining the meaning of the new words and using them often in activities. And finally, enjoy time together. Model language when you play and interact and practice taking turns and listening to each other. Have fun communicating. By creating greater awareness about DLD, children will receive support sooner. We all have a responsibility to share what we know about DLD so that researchers and professionals can continue to work hard every day to make the lives of children with DLD easier. Please consider running your own DLD Awareness Day at your setting. For more information, please go to the Raddled website given on the next slide. Here are some useful websites. As mentioned before, Raddled stands for Raising Awareness of Developmental Language Disorder. They provide resources that explain what DLD is, the impact it can have, how to get help and how to raise awareness. They also have a YouTube page which has lots of videos all about DLD made by professionals and children and young people with DLD. ICANN is the children's communication charity. They offer practical help for parents who are concerned about their child. They also offer early years and school professionals training, support and information. The second link here takes you straight to an information page for teachers which has lots of useful resources. Finally, DLD and Me raises awareness about developmental language disorder and offers support and resources for parents, teachers and individuals impacted by DLD. These videos have some really good summaries of DLD with information shared by professionals and people who have DLD. There's Developmental Language Disorder, The Consensus Explained by Dorothy Bishop, DLD123, a video about the Raddled campaign in 2021, and Lily Farrington's amazing Developmental Language Disorder animation. Here are a few more helpful links and resources. Supporting a Child with DLD in the Classroom from DLD and Me, the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists website for Developmental Language Disorder, and Communicating Phonics, which is a free downloadable resource provided by the Communication Trust. It's a guide for teachers delivering and interpreting the phonics screening check for children with SLCN, including DLD. This resource is from 2012, so it's before DLD terminology came out. So you can look out for specific language impairment. There will be specific receptive language impairment and specific expressive language impairment. We hope it's helpful. Thank you so much for watching this training. If you would like to learn more about supporting children with DLD, please access one of our other narrated PowerPoints or online training workshops.